right, everybody, welcome back uh, to the channel, The Whiteboard Doctor. Uh, this is another session of 5-Minute EKG, and today I thought we could talk about uh, atrial fibrillation. Um, so here's our 12-lead EKG. Uh, what I want to do just for the sake of uh, ease of understanding is I'm actually going to white out part of this EKG so that we can write a few definitions. So I apologize, we're going to white out leads 1, 2, and 3. I hope everybody is okay with that. Uh, we will not need them for the discussion here. And I think it'll just be a little easier to refer to our diagnostic criteria if we have a white area to write them. Alright, so as I said, today we will be talking about atrial fibrillation, or AFib. And AFib is a something that we very, very, very commonly see on EKG. Um, it is something that the definition, the diagnostic definition, is very straightforward, um, although in, in clinical practice it can be a little trickier. Um, so I guess first, what is AFib? Um, so atrial fibrillation, as the uh, name implies, is when the atria um, are fibrillating. So they're having uh, very quick, rapid, random depolarizations um, all throughout the atria, and even sometimes on the pulmonary vein. Um, there's not a single, you know, SA node. Atria is depolarized through the AV node into the ventricles. Um, it is the atria themselves that are depolarizing, and they're sending that depolarization from a random spot in the atria down towards the AV node. What does this mean in terms of 12-lead EKG? So um, the AV node, um, as we know, takes time to conduct, and the ventricles take time to depolarize and repolarize. So when the atria send that um, depolarization through the AV node, if that depolarization makes it through the AV node into the ventricles, um, there are a number of additional atrial depolarizations that will come after that that won't get through um, because the ventricles are depolarizing and repolarizing. So that means that there is a random atrial depolarization that makes it through the AV node and then once those ventricles are repolarized, another atrial depolarization will make it through. What this leads to on the 12-lead EKG is number one, an irregularly irregular rhythm. So that is the first part of the definition. It's not just irregular, it's an irregularly irregular because you're getting those atrial depolarizations through the AV node um, at random times and then you'll get your second depolarization and third depolarization all at random times. The second thing this leads to is that you don't have a, a good synchronized atrial depolarization. You're getting all these different foci within random spots in the atria and pulmonary vein that are all depolarizing. What this means is that you don't get a good P wave on EKG. You actually will get no P wave at all. So you'll have no discernible P wave. There is one caveat to this that we can talk about which is kind of a coarse P wave. It's a P wave that doesn't really look like a normal P wave. It's more so um, just a kind of a, a coarse blip that'll show up on the EKG um, where a P wave might be. So this is literally the two diagnostic criteria for atrial fibrillation. It's an irregularly irregular rhythm without a discernible P wave. So in practice, how is this teased out? Um, to do this, I want you guys to look at the V1, to and V5 because we have the whole um, whole strip uh, to look at. So when we're talking about irregularly irregular rhythm, we're looking at the R to R. Um, so we can look here. So right, this is our R, and then this is our next R. So we're looking at this R to R. And if we measure this out, um, we will see. I guess we can count it here. One, two, three. Five, so that's eight, and then another four, so that's nine. So that's nine small boxes from that R to R. Now let's just go over here to this. This is another R to R. And that R to R looks to be four, five, eight boxes. Oh, by the way, this uh, last one was not nine. It was eight, nine, 10, 11. This was 12, I apologize. Um, and you can pick any R to R. We can go to this one or this one, all these are going to be different. So there's no pattern to the irregularity. It's not like you have 8, then 12, then 8, then 12. Um, it's all random ones. 
uh, meaning that it's irregularly irregular. We'll erase this here so we clear up a little room. And then the second criteria is that you don't have a P wave. So if we look on this EKG, um, you will see you got, we have T waves, right? T wave, here's another T, here's another T. And if you look closely, um, you might see little spots that might look like a P wave. Like, is this a P wave here? Or is this a little P wave here? Or is this a P wave here? This EKG has what we would call these coarse P waves. None of the P wave morphology fit the normal P wave morphology that we should see, which is like that. You get these little undiscernible P waves, some of low amplitude that are wider, some high amplitude. They don't quite fit the normal morphology. So this is what we could call a coarse atrial fibrillation because you do see kind of these coarse nonspecific um, poor morphology P waves um, within the rhythm strip. Um, but in this patient's case, they have this irregularly irregular rhythm from R to R with no discernible P waves. So this patient is in atrial fibrillation based off this. Um, we can look at any of the other leads as well. So V5, same thing, irregularly irregular. Um, there's not any P wave, right? There's no good P wave here, no good P wave here, no good P wave here, no good P wave here. Again, we see these T's, but we don't see any P's. There's another T. Um, the rate on this patient is something to note, and we can talk more about it in a, in a future uh, uh, episode here. Um, but this patient's rate, when we talk about atrial fibrillation, you can actually have a rate that is normal, so they're rate controlled. You can have actually bradycardia where you get into this pattern um, where you have a slow atrial fibrillation or you can have tachycardia. The tachycardia we actually call atrial fibrillation with a rapid ventricular response which is abbreviated RVR. Um, in this patient, if we count the R's, right, because this is an irregular rhythm, um, so you can't do the normal, you know, 300, et cetera, et cetera. You actually have to count each R. And if you go through, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And then you will multiply that 26. QRS is by 6, um, since the rhythm strip itself is 10 seconds, and 26 times 6 is 120 plus 36, so it's like 156, if my math is correct. Hopefully it is. Um, so this patient is in atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response um, because their ventricles are beating beyond. There's some different definitions, but most people say more than 110, more than 120. Um, nonetheless, 156 definitely fits that. Um, so this is an individual with atrial fibrillation that is not rate controlled. So they're in this rapid ventricular response. Um, all right, I think that's enough for introduction to atrial fibrillation. Again, we try to keep these uh, short five minutes additional uh, episodes that we can cover um, will be, uh, you know, if you have two to one atrial fibrillation or if you have um, slow atrial fibrillation, uh, we'll also cover atrial flutter, multifocal atrial tachycardia. There's a whole bunch of things. Um, I've been a little slow um, with the videos lately. I, mean, I know it's been a lot of months since I've posted one, but we're going to start posting more regularly. I'm going to shoot for once a week. Um, so let me know in the comments uh, what type of topics you like to see. I'm not only going to do EKGs. I'll cover topics uh, all across the spectrum um, in different ways. Um, so feel free to uh, Give uh, the, the channel here a subscribe. Um, let me know in the comments what you think and what other topics you want to cover and what questions you might have. Uh, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.